welcome to our latest episode of the Your Plate podcast. I'm Maya, one of your hosts. I'm Artie. And today we're going to be talking about winter remedies, in, especially in the form of garlic, turmeric and ginger. And then this is going to be part one. And in our next episode, we're going to then discuss some of the things that we are doing with garlic, ginger and turmeric in terms of our cooking. Uh, but before we do that, we wanted to share some updates. So how have you been, Arthi? I think you've done a bit of travel. Yeah, recently. I went to go and see um, a really dear friend in America, which was great for five days. Had a lot of organisation to do prior to the trip, <laughs> making sure that all the childcare was covered, the picks, the drops. And it was great to reconnect with um, somebody that used to live here and she she now lives in the States. So it was just lovely to kind of re- reconnect yeah. with another mum and life's so busy. She's in a different time zone. So it's quite hard and actually to be there with her. And it was, yeah, it was really, really nice. I obviously loved the plane journey. It was a <laughs> seven hours and then two hours in transit and then another two hours. You can't fly direct to Richmond and Virginia. So that was, that was really nice. And actually um, it reminded me of a podcast that Dr. Rangan's done recently on the importance of friendships and human connections. Ooh, and as yeah. human beings, you know, have the importance of those social connections for our emotional well-being which yeah. I know you would know all about that with um, positive psychology so that's been really good and um, what are your updates Maya? Yeah and similarly we also managed to get a bit of kid free travel um, yes and that was really nice three days away from the kids it was for a, sort of a, a family birthday um, so there's lots of other extended family there but not our own little kids and I was saying to you earlier that I think even like a month or two ago I would have said no we're not doing it but because we booked it a year in advance it, it was just sort of laid out and happening and I'm just so glad that we managed to do it and it was just good I mean we've we um, with my husband we have done little trips away I don't think we've done much recently since the second one arrived Mm -hmm. second kid arrived and it was just so nice and you just think this is it's only two three days but it can be really really good for your relationship and things like that so that was that was great sounds really good very refreshing much needed I yeah, think you were so. saying you felt very refreshed didn't you yeah yeah very refreshed rejuvenated and um I think just that time to yeah. time out for yourself yeah self-care all about self-care <laughs> especially yeah. five days away by, yeah. by myself five is pretty yeah, yeah. It's pretty good well done for that I, I haven't managed to do five days away from the kids I think I'm just That's not ready I'm personally I start getting a bit anxious after sort of the third day I just need to sort of be it's not for them well mm. it is for them as well but for myself personally I just would like mm to be and I need to sort of see them by that point um so moving on to our main segment one of the things that comes up frequently in winter cooking is you know how do you make it feel warm nourishing exciting um and the garlic is a big feature of our cooking the turmeric is also there uh and then also you know there are great properties of things like ginger as well so Maya, I know that with garlic, you're a big, we're both, we're actually, we're both garlic yes. fiends. We love our garlic. And um, you were telling me about a very funny story <laughs> from university. So if you could share that with our listeners, because I think it yeah, would give so, them a good chuckle. Well, I, because I had done in, in, in my gap year, I'd spent time in India and they were all about some of their, you know, natural remedies and the Ayurvedic things. So I'd read a lot about garlic being, you know, the natural anti antibiotic, it's a natural antibiotic. And so I was using raw and it's best apparently and you can verify some of this later because we're going to get into this uh but apparently it's best in its raw form so i was literally crushing garlic adding honey if i had it to hand and Mm. maybe some water and and i was consuming this as my um as my sort of uh, anti-cold thing. And then obviously first year of uni, uh, there are, it's like a massive cold and flu season. Bug fest. <laughs> it's an absolute bug fest. And so I was basically stinking out the whole of the corridor uh, with my raw garlic. And I don't even want to think about what I was personally smelling <laughs> like. In that. I, I just don't, I mean, I'm surprised. And thank you to my, my uni friends who are still my friends because I, I, I can't imagine what I was doing in my first term of uni. But clearly sort of my trip in India had had enough of it an impact on me but anyway then for my birthday I remember being handed garlic cloves uh, by, by my new uni friends so that was my That's relationship your garlic story. <laughs> so, my so, relationship so my garlic story is not quite as funny <laughs> but it's just my generally when I read recipes and you'll see um a recipe for four people and it will say two cloves of garlic mm. I don't know whether you do this. I'd be interested to know what the listeners do. I triple or quadruple <laughs> what, when it says two cloves of garlic. For me, I allocate two cloves, cloves of garlic, garlic per person because I, I like food with flavour. And obviously in winter, you can really start to ramp it up because I think people crave a bit more flavour yes. and warmth. So, so basically that's you just... interpret two cloves as two bulbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, we I actually, I buy three bulbs a week and I probably get through three bulbs. 
Oh. But we'll talk about what I also do with an entire bulb of garlic, which is a nice little trick for Oh, yes, cookery. and I will talk about mine later on as yes. well, because yeah. we also have our ways yeah. of um, prepping prepping our garlic. garlic. Yes. So, so should I go into a little <clears throat> bit about sort of the nutritional properties of garlic? And yes. If I, if I sort of yes, um, inform the listeners a bit about that. Um, and as Mai's rightly said, turmeric, ginger and garlic, they all have fantastic antibacterial and antiviral um qualities and properties which means you know they are you know they're great for supporting your immunity and helping you to fight you know kind of an infection fighter and in fact garlic was used to be known as russian penicillin (laughs) Uh, so it has got a history of use as an infection fighter now the actual active ingredient in garlic for those of you who like a bit of science is allicin so that is the active component and as you said my rightly as well that allicin is more potent when it's raw so it's a bit unpleasant obviously for the people that are subject Mm. to it but but when it's raw, the antibiotic quality in it is uh, more potent than if it's cooked. However, having said that, even if it's cooked, it's still um, Has, it's yeah it's still got properties, just not as strong. And um, yeah, my only issue when I used to chew this raw garlic in in my drinks is that it was my mouth. So it would start hot. burning. Yeah. So so, but I do have an updated, more sort of uh, sociable version of that, and that is actually in pesto you use raw garlic, mm. right? Because yeah. you just blend it in, so it's not cooked, and then obviously that's just part of what pesto tastes like and so if I want to find a way to having yes. more raw garlic in my diet then that's another really that's good another one. way but actually you mentioned so the Ayurvedic the actual traditional Ayurvedic recipe I think you might mention it is garlic with a little bit of oil yes. maybe it takes the edge of the spiciness off because if in case if you have tried raw garlic it is very hot isn't it yeah so you can actually put a bit of oil in it and also a bit of honey as well just yes. to take the edge of the heat so that is actually the traditional Ayurvedic and I'm sure there was um, some mention really. of milk as well so really oh yeah. milk oh, I don't Okay, well, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Not, not the one I know of. Um, the other, there's some really good um, data, systematic reviews and meta-analysis on garlic and how it can help to lower blood pressure. And there was a bit of a phase, remember, sort of 20 years ago, every, you know, garlic was all the rage. People were taking those garlic tablets. Well, we had a pharmacy, so I was always really aware of what the latest health mm-hmm. crazes were. Um, but actually, in the last 10 years, the data is looking really positive around how it helps to lower blood pressure. Um, another really amazing thing about garlic, apart from its fl- you know flavour, is that it's a good prebiotic. So it acts as a fertilizer for the gut. So you're encouraging the flour- you know the diversity and the growth of good bacteria in the gut. So so many wonderful things about garlic. I've there. just had another memory, which yeah. is that for my I think it was for my 18th, we went to a bar or restaurant called Garlic and Shots. <laughs> So, so they served everything on the menu was garlic. It was joking. delicious. What, including the alcohol shots? And then, yeah, and then they had garlic flavour vodka. They had lots of other vodkas as well. Okay, but that yeah. sounds incredible. Yeah, Where was it was that? in central Where London. It's clearly not survived the, 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 the five years since I was 18. It's clearly not survived <laughs> yeah. those. But um, yeah, that was another thing that I did in, my, in the name of garlic. Wow, and God, then I don't you... even want to mention Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, um, <laughs> you know, the garlic property that, you know, sort of using those. Yeah, fun. I remember you used to love Buffy. So I think actually that restaurant had a bit of a you know anti-vampire oh, theme I see. to it <clears throat> Gosh, but anyway, who, who I, that, I have to say, I've learned a lot about. How, I knew you liked garlic, but I did not realise you were almost on the verge of, verge I've had, of being I've obsessed with garlic. I've had to sort of distance myself over the years okay. just for social purposes. But anyway, so so that's, so garlic. that's garlic, and we are, we're going to talk about some of our what, how we like to use garlic uh, later on. So let's have a quick think about turmeric now, because that's the other one. And I again remember growing up, and if I had a cold, my mum would make me. Now we, Arthur and I, we, we're not sure if this was rub. You've got another name for it, which was gore. Gorpani. Gorpani. Um, putting it out there to the listeners, if anybody knows, I couldn't get hold of my mum just now. <laughs> I tried to ring her, but I couldn't find out whether it was rub. The reason we're confused is because then after babies, I was, we were also given rub, which had gund, gund in, in it, it. Uh, which is, what's the English So word? gund is acacia gum. It's a sap from a tree, which is said to help with your bones and joints after you've given birth and and, and honestly like i've been yeah. i've heard lots of different things but i've been told that people that didn't have it then they do have sort of back pain afterwards i don't right. know if it's yeah. true. you know this is a bit of hearsay and, and this is to be honest the reason we're doing this podcast is to try and have a bit more of the clarity of what's scientifically mm. you know true and not but anyway so that's a different drink but i remember having a yellow one i didn't really like it very much okay. but i was given it and um I now, and I get asked about this a lot, but I now make my own golden milk when I'm feeling under the weather. And I do try and have that a few times in that day to ward off, uh, you know, 
incoming cold and i used to actually give it to my son when he mm. would, would drink it as well so what's your so, golden milk made yeah, of so no and this is based on you know internet like finding variations on, online and and things that work and what's actually going to be have medicinal properties but it's um warmed milk with the um and fat milk so because i've read and you're going to talk about this and mm-hmm. clarify mm-hmm. but i've read that turmeric needs fat to be activated it's much more potent when it's been mixed with fat pinch of black pepper ginger powder cinnamon all warmed up together and then if that's my time to drink tea then I will have a tea bag in there so that just becomes my tea mm. but if, if it's not a time to be drinking tea then it just doesn't have the tea bag in oh, one sounds I, like an Indian tea it, it just does sounds like masala it, chai. it doesn't sound that yeah exactly but mm. it's got the turmeric in it but the, so mm. because it's got oh, the turmeric yes, in it yeah. it's bitter so then when you take it out you then add in the honey you don't add the honey to the warming pan mm-hmm. you add that in afterwards because you don't heat you shouldn't really heat because honey. there's um well the manuka honey has the high levels of antibacterial yeah. qualities but um they say the antibacterial qual- properties in the honey can be damaged with heat right okay uh, yeah so so yeah so you add in that i have to say sometimes i, I can't always be bothered to use the manuka honey because it's so expensive yes, and, yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. uh so so anyway so that's my my golden milk and i do find that um mm. has really helped me when i do have that plus my pesto and you know garlic meals then you know it's a lovely combination yeah, it's yeah. quite tasty as well yeah it will taste amazing <laughs> so i mean that's why nice. i think that's the beauty of if, is that not sort of the essence of that's the essence of indian cookery isn't it the fact that we're using all these spices so not only do they taste great it's all the medicinal properties yes. of those spices as well. I think that's at the core of kind of Ayurvedic traditions yes. and Asian cookery. But the thing that I wanted to clarify with Arathi is that this thing about, is it true about the fat that, you know, you need to activate it? Because I've had some people tell me, oh, you know, for my joints, I have, you know, w- water with honey and turmeric powder in it. And I sort of, I've said to them, I don't think that's going to have the effectiveness in it because from what I've read, that it's mm. not got, you know, it's not activated enough. So what, what okay, did you so find I did a in bit the of, research? So yeah. I did a bit of research on it. I can't be dis- definitive um but what i can say is that turmeric there are that in the last two years there have been a thousand studies on turmeric just because it is one of the most researched botanicals um globally and um what it said is so there was there was a mixture of things so turmeric itself the actual root itself contains some a small amount of essential oil um so if you were to slice fresh turmeric in the water i think you would be able to your body would there would be a bioavailability of the active property in turmeric which is curcumin most people may know that because when you go out to the shop the actual tablets that you buy are curcumin they will call them curcumin tablets because that is the active component of turmeric so if you're having the root I feel there would be some essential oils in that if you're having the powder I feel like there would be probably no oils in that and then the there was quite a lot of research around turmeric essential oil so that means that you know they've taken a huge amount of turmeric and then distilled it and actually made a little bottle you know sort of like yeah. the uh, lavender oil so you can actually buy turmeric essential oil which is very potent which it would be Ooh, because obviously you're I'm very interested to try so that I don't I've, I've, I've actually yeah I've actually not come across it so I don't know whether you can actually I guess you could probably ingest that I didn't do loads of research as to whether it's an edible oil or whether you use it as an application um because turmeric is antibacterial antiviral as we talked about with garlic and ginger but it's also anti-inflammatory so so yeah we'd have to i don't know it's too much about it so it is anti-inflammatory and people do use it for spray especially in india i mean it's in the ayurvedic traditions of turmeric date back thousands of years so it might be used for sprains pain um anything like that yeah so that's the okay i I can't go definitive on whether you you have to have oil yes with turmeric fine so but but you did find about the pepper that yes so the other yeah pepper so pepper contains something called piperine and you only need a little bit of piperine to help make the curcumin um make it more bioavailable 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 means how easily your body absorbs it so you make the curcumin more bioavailable by combining turmeric with a bit of pepper so if you're ever cooking with turmeric or making these kind of what you know the drink you talked about I actually call it the yeah I call it a witch's brew in our house (laughs) it's our witch's brew because I feel like we make we we start making it around Halloween which is when everyone starts to get ill so it coincides quite nicely (laughs) and Um, the color as well exactly the color's a bit orange yeah exactly so it's my witch's brew and so yeah any anytime you're using turmeric use a little bit of black pepper okay all right so that's a um a really good hack to um yeah yeah, for turmeric perfect okay so the final one that we wanted to mention was ginger yes so ginger is used really widely in indian cookery and actually if you think about chinese cookery as well don't they so ginger is really widely used um in the eastern world and just as turmeric the active component is curcumin in ginger there's compounds are gingerdiol and ginger oil. There's all sorts of derivations of the word ginger. 
And um, where else, can, Maya, can you think where else you might have been using ginger quite a lot? Maybe when you were... Sushi, when I'm eating sushi, when you're pregnant. Yes, anti-sickness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. remember people would say have some ginger beer. So it's very, oh, it's very yes. well known for its anti-sickness properties. It's very popular during pregnancy. So doctors will tell you to have like a ginger beer, although I think there's tons of sugar in ginger beer. So you could just have fresh ginger mm-hmm. in some water with a little bit of honey. And again, like turmeric, it has fantastic anti-inflammatory properties. And there's some really interesting research about how it actually inhibits the inflammatory genes. Mm. So again, we're talking about all this exciting nutrient, you know, sort of genetic um, research going on with um, nutrition. Uh, does what is there anything about cooked versus raw ginger? There's not much about that, but interestingly, I was going to touch upon the difference between the ginger root and ginger powder. Sometimes, just even from a convenience aspect. So you know, if you're making teas, if you don't have fresh ginger, you can use ginger powder. So it's not as you know with turmeric. A lot of people have this thing you want to use fresh turmeric. But with ginger, there isn't so much evidence showing that the fresh ginger is yeah. so much more powerful compared to ginger powder. Okay. Yeah, a small little nuance there. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. So we've covered three delicious, well, turmeric you know, needs to be activated, but we've covered three things that we are going to be using this winter uh, and that have fantastic properties, especially when they are used well and combined well with the right things and, and, and cooked appropriately and prepared appropriately. So I hope that's a useful foundation and we're going to take this a little bit further in our next episode where we continue the theme of winter remedies and winter warmers. Hope you found that interesting. And yes, if anybody knows what that golden milk was that I was drinking when I was little, please do let me know. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Bye.